ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Amma ba'd All praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise him, we thank him, we glorify him, we seek his help and aid Whoever Allah guides, there is none who can misguide And whoever he causes to go astray, there is none who can guide I testify that there is no one worthy of worship but Allah And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Is his slave and messenger Verily, the best of speech is the book of Allah, and the best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of religious matters are those that are innovated, and every religious innovation is a bid'ah, and every bid'ah is a misguidance, and every misguidance will be in the fire of hell. We ask Allah to protect us from the fire of hell. Ameen. My brothers and my sisters, Alhamdulillah, Allah blessed us with this great religion of Islam and guided us to the straight path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with Islam and guided us to the straight path. And it is more than sufficient for us, for our requirements. From this great religion, we receive contentment and guidance. From it, we attain peace and tranquility and security. And because of it, love and harmony are spread. Allah will grant might and honor to people in proportion of how much they uphold this religion. And Allah will humiliate people relative to how much they abandon this religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chose this religion for us as our deen, as our way of life. And Allah will not accept any other religion from anyone. As Allah says, وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِي غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلُ مِنْهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And whoever seeks a religion other than Islam, it will never be accepted from him and in the hereafter he will be among the losers the religion of islam is complete so there is absolutely no need for invented opinions innovative desires or man-made legislations the blessings and favors that have been given to us by islam are all inclusive and there is no need for seasons and occasions to be invented for us to celebrate them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, Al yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al islam adina. That this day I have perfected for you your religion and have completed my favor upon you and have chosen for you Islam as your religion. Our religion is supreme. It's the most perfect one. It combines the good of this life and the hereafter. It addressed the soul and was not heedless of the body. It gave preference to the hereafter without neglecting our needs in this life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us again in Quran, وَبَتَغِي فِي مَا آتَاكَ اللَّهُ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ 
wala tansa nasibaka minad dunya that seek that which Allah has given you the home of the hereafter yet do not forget your share in this world my brothers and my sisters I ask all of you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how is it that the believers can squander this position which Allah granted us and then become humiliated while we still have the Quran and the Sunnah to refer to why would we be pleased with becoming mere followers after enjoying the position of leadership how can we go astray and become blind imitators after being guides? My brothers and my sisters, the answer to all these questions lies in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Narrated by Abu Sa'id al Khudri radiallahu an, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that you will certainly follow the ways of those who came before you, hand span by hand span, arm's length by arm's length, until even if they were to enter the lizard's hole, that you will follow them. We said, O Messenger of Allah, do you mean the Jews and the Christians? The Prophet wasallam said, who else? My brothers and my sisters, what the Prophet wasallam spoke of has indeed come to pass and has become widespread in recent times. Many of the Muslims follow the enemies of Allah in their customs and ways of behavior and imitate them in some of their rituals and some of their celebrations and their festivals. And once again, we have the evil forces of Kufr propagating the celebration of a holiday that spreads immorality, evil, dressed in the garment of virtue. And this is the age-old method of Shaitan when he tried to deceive our parents Adam salam and Hawa salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about this strategy of shaitan. And he swore, shaitan swore by Allah to both of them. And he said, Indeed, I am among the sincere advisors to both of you. So we have to beware of the deceiver who approaches us with an advising tongue for he knows that if he was to make his intentions clear then he will not achieve his objectives inshallah we will look at today a day that will soon be upon us the day of Halloween the festival of Halloween many people who celebrate this festival of Halloween if you ask them why are you celebrating this day? What is the significance of this day? Why are you doing the things that you are doing? Why are you wearing scary masks and disguises? Why do you go trick-or-treating? Many of them, they do not even know why. They don't even know. They will say that everyone is doing it and we just keep doing it and we repeat it and we teach our, our kids and we repeat it year after year. But when you examine the history of it, you will find that it has deep roots. It has more so deep religious roots in history, cultural roots in history. When we go back in history, we find that Halloween has its origins in the festival of Samhain among the Celts of ancient Scotland and Ireland. On the day corresponding to November the 1st, on contemporary calendars, the new year was believed to begin. That day was considered the beginning of the winter period. And during the Samhain festival, the souls of those who had died were believed to return 
to visit their homes, the neighbors, the relatives, and the people who they knew. And those who had died during the year were believed to journey to the other world. People set bonfires on hilltops for relighting their heart fires for the winter and to scare away the evil spirits. And they sometimes wore scary masks and other disguises to avoid being recognized by the ghost thought to be present. It was in those ways that beings such as witches, hobgoblins, fairies, and demons came to be associated with that day. Now, when Christianity came into the area, when the Christian church came into the area, they had a habit. The Christian church had a habit that if they find that there is a festival or a celebration in the land and they wanted to convert the native population, what they would do, they would transform it into one of the Christian festivals. They will move it in such a way that it overlaps with one of their celebrations. So what they did was that they moved what is called All Hallows Day, the day that they celebrate the saints of the Christian church. They moved it to the 1st of November. Then they moved the other festival that they had, which is All Souls Day, which is the 2nd of November which is the day that they celebrate and remember the souls of the dead, and they prayed for the dead. So the 31st of October was now called All Hallows Eve, and from Hallows Eve, we get Halloween today, from its Christian source. And why do people go trick-or-treating? Well because it has to do with a Christian practice as well, whereby the poor and the children would go from house to house offering their prayers for the dead in that household in exchange for a soul cookie. It is called souling. So when they were given a cookie, then they would offer a prayer for the dead. And then they will move on to the next house and the next house. And that's how we have the trick-or-treating today. My brothers and my sisters, but when we look at it today, most of its historical religious roots were lost. Halloween has transformed into big businesses. It is the second most profitable holiday after Christmas. In the United States alone, on candy alone, that day, they will spend up to $2 billion just in candy. And if you, if you add costumes to it and everything else, just for that day, according to the National Retail Federation, consumer spending is expected to reach $8.05 billion this year. Slightly down, from $8.78 billion last year due to the drop in participation as a result of COVID. So obviously, there are big corporations and businesses driving it that will keep promoting it and because of the huge, huge profits that they make. So essentially, it has been transformed to a manufactured holiday to promote business. And they would keep bombarding you and me and our children with this message because they want each and every one of us to participate in it and to spend on it. And if we stop spending on it and we don't have any interest in it and they start losing money and profits, then they will move on to something else. So there is a sense of a manufactured holiday in this celebration and festival because it is not natural. They are not celebrating it because of anything natural or deep in meaning. 
it was created by people who do not have Tawheed in their hearts and who do not seek to honor Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their actions. And when you compare that to our celebration, our days of celebration and festivals, our festivals and celebrations have deep roots coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They have deep meanings in history. They have continuous lessons for us as individuals and as a group. So when we are talking about festivals that we should commemorate, festivals that we should celebrate, days that we should honor, we have to keep in mind that these days have an effect on us. It's not just simply a fun day. These days have an effect on us and it tells other people who we are and it tells our children who we are and it tells our children and it tells others non-Muslims who we are and it defines our identity and it defines our future so any type of day that we have to celebrate as Muslims have to be weighed very carefully on the scale that must please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not one that is foreign and wasteful and the very least it should never contradict our fundamental beliefs of Iman. The days we have for celebration and as festivals are on indeed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and are dignified and honorable days with deep meanings. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-muslimina min kulli dhambin fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Hamdan Kathiran Tayyiban Mubarak and Fee, Rabbish Rahli Sadri, Wayasirli Amri, Wahlul Ugdata Milisani, Yafkahu Kauli, Amma Bad. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu an stated that when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam migrated to Medina, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw the people celebrating two specific days annually. Some scholars have stated that these were the holidays of the Persians. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked them, what are these two days? And they informed him that these were the days of celebration of festivals from the days of Jahiliyyah from before the advent of Islam. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Inna Allah qada abdalakum bihima khayran minhuma yawm al-adha wa yawm al-fitr. That indeed Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has replaced these days with days better than them. The day of Eid al-Adha and the day of Eid al-Fitr. This makes it even clearer that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam forbids Muslims to celebrate festivals of disbelievers. And he seeks to remind us, as is reported in another authentic hadith, as he said, the day of Fitr and days of Tashriq are our holidays, the people of Islam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam referred to the fact that every nation has its own festivals. When he said, every nation has its own Eid, and this is our Eid, referring to Eid al-Adha and Eid al-Fitr. <clears throat> These ahadith correspond exactly to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in yet another verse. Allah says, لِكُلِّنْ جَعَلْنَا مِنْكُمْ شِرْعَةً وَمِنْ That to each among you, we have prescribed a law and a clear way. And in another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
لِكُلِّ أُمَّةٍ جَعَلْنَا مَنْ سَكَنْ هُمْ نَاسِكُوهُ For every nation, we have ordained religious ceremonies which they must follow. So my brothers and my sisters, Islam has established a path to guidance which differs from the culture and customs of the disbelievers regardless, regardless if they are people of the book. Regardless of whether they are from the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, or otherwise, and so transgressing the commandment of our Creator in favor of a tradition that is not authored by Him, is not following the right course that Allah has chosen for us. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, He is not one of us. He is not one of us who imitates other than us. Do not imitate the Jews and the Christians. Whoever imitates a people, he is one of them. Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah said, imitating them in some of their festivals implies that one is pleased with their false beliefs and practices and gives them the hope that they may have the opportunity to humiliate and mislead the weak. So when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, man tashabbaha bi qawmin fahuwa minhum, that the one who imitates a people is one of them, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam here is e explaining to us the basic fundamental behavior of human beings. The basic fundamental aspect of human behavior and psychology is that when you start imitating someone outwardly, then slowly you start to implement them in beliefs, you, you start to pattern them in beliefs, and slowly you start to pattern them in practice, until eventually you become like one of them. So if you want to be identified as the believers, if you want to reserve your love for those who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who Allah loves back, then let us remember this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَلَا يُحِبُّ رَجُلٌ قَوْمًا إِلَّا حُشِرَ مَعَهُمْ That the one who loves a people will be resurrected with them. So you also have to be careful of who you love. Which people do you associate with? Which people do you wish to be part of? Because these actually might be the people that you will be re resurrected with on the day of judgment. <clears throat> and if someone is still not satisfied with all of this, and he says that, you know what, it's just candies. I'm just taking my kids for a, a fun day to collect some candy. They're innocent. It's nothing religious. We say it is difficult for you and me to actually be aware of all the benefits and all the harms of an act. That's why we depend on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us. Sometimes we cannot see it. So if we are so naive now to think that they are innocent now, then wait until they, be they become high schoolers and, and they start college. Because then, Halloween celebration will be a different type of immoral and lewd celebration that you will not be able to stop it then. Because you brought it in your home when they were kids, and you teach them that it's okay when they were little. So if you don't want to face that harsh reality when they come and they, they say to you, you know what, Dad? You know what, Mom? I'm going, and there is nothing you can do about it. You better start, stop it now when they are little. So my brothers and my sisters, <clears throat> we have to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also told us, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, ku anfusakum wa ahlikum nara, wa kuduhan nasu wal hijara, that all you who believe, protect yourselves and your families from the fire of hell, 
whose fuel will be men and stones, fuel will be humankind and stones. And the problem or reason why we are so attracted to the celebration and the festivals of others is simply because we do not honor and we do not spend and we do not emphasize on our own Eids and celebrations. We need to start spending and we need to start taking time off for our own Eids so that our children will know that we have our own celebrations. If we actually spend time and effort and money on our own Eid, then when Halloween comes, our children, our kids will be like, I have enough candy, I don't need anything, I don't need any candy. When Christmas comes and you give them gifts, someone give them gifts for Christmas, they will be like, no, I already had enough gifts on my Eid. I don't need any other gifts. So you have to decide. And even after that, all of that, somebody still might say, I am still not convinced. Then we must say, let us come to a common point, a common ground. And what is this common point? Celebrate whatever you want to celebrate, but I ask you, if you're a Muslim and you have Iman in your hearts, then celebrate your own Eid more than you celebrate and more than you, you, you spend time on other Eids, if, if it has to do that. That's a start. Spend time and spend money and spend all your efforts on your own celebration, and that's a start. At least that's a start. Let that be the first step, that we cannot be Muslims neglecting our own festivals and our own Eids, and then borrowing from other people and celebrating their festivals. We cannot do that. Because if someone, think about it, if someone, a non-Muslim, was to look at us from the outside, seeing that this Muslim is celebrating Halloween and not spending time on his Eid, when his Eid comes, wouldn't that be like an imbalance? It would be like weird. Like, what is this person following? We never see a Christian or a Jew spending money on our Eid al-Adha or our Eid al-Fitr. Never. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and all the Muslims from the harm of temptations and from the evil of ourselves and from the plots of shaitan. Oh Allah, save us and our families from shaitan. O oh Allah, we ask that you give us power to overcome our weaknesses over our sins and grant us sincere repentance from all the sins we are committing. We ask you, Ya Arham al Rahimin, to make the path of Jannah easy for us, to make your worship easy for us and beloved to us. O oh Allah, we ask you that you make your love the greatest love in our lives that you make the love of your prophet the greater than we have for any other human beings, including our own selves. We ask you, Ya Arham al Rahimin, Ya Malik al Mulk, that you give us all the best in this life and the hereafter, and protect us from the worst in this life and in the hereafter. O oh Allah, we ask you to forgive us all our sins the ones that we know about and the ones that we do not know about. Ameen, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhaba al-nar. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-jannata wa ma qurraba ilayha min qawlin wa amal. Wa na'udhu bika min al-nar wa ma qurraba ilayha min qawlin wa amal. Wa nas'aluka al-khair ma sa'alaka abduka Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. ونعوذ بك من الشر ما استعاذك منه عبدك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا على طاعتك اللهم عنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم إنا نسألك حبك وحب من يحبك وحب, ي... وحب عمل يقرب إلى حبك اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وَأَذِلَّ الشِّرْكُ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ وَدَمِّرْ أَعْدَاءَ الدِّينَ اللهم فاطر السماوات والأرض أنت ولي في الدنيا والآخرة توفنا مسلمين والحكنا بالصالحين 
يا حي يا قيوم وبرحمتك نستغيث أصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأقيموا الصلاة